Ever felt like your PC has the FPS you expect, but the gameplay still feels sluggish? That's not your GPU, and it's not even your CPU. The hidden enemy here is RAM latency. Your memory isn't just about speed in megahertz, it's about how fast it can respond to requests. Bad latency can add invisible delays to every single frame your PC renders. And here's the kicker, Windows and even your BIOS don't optimize this stuff for gaming by default. So today, I'm going to walk you through 5 proven steps to fix high RAM latency. We'll tune hidden BIOS settings, OS registry tweaks, and monitoring tools safely without going into crazy overclocking territory. By the end of this, your system should feel snappier, smoother, and way more consistent in games. But first, quick note before we dive in. Before making any changes to your BIOS or registry settings, it's highly recommended to create a system restore point. This will allow you to quickly roll back your system in case something goes wrong. Additionally, if possible, make a note of your current BIOS RAM settings or take a photo of them so you have a reference. That way, if you notice any instability or issues after tweaking, you can easily return to your original configuration without hassle. This simple step helps ensure that you can proceed with confidence and avoid potential setbacks. All right, let's jump in. Step one, test your current RAM latency. Before making any changes to your system, it's essential to first establish a baseline. If you skip this step, you'll have no way of knowing whether your adjustments actually made a noticeable difference. To do this, you can download either AEIDA64 or Latency Mod, both of which are linked in the description for easy access. AEIDA64 is a robust tool that can measure your memory latency down to the nanosecond which is incredibly precise. On the other hand, Latency Mon is more focused on Windows and can identify if high memory latency is contributing to DPC spikes, which can cause performance issues, particularly in real-time tasks like gaming or video editing. Once you've downloaded and installed AEIDA64, run the memory latency test. After running the test, you'll be presented with a number, likely something like 72 nanoseconds or 64 nanoseconds. In gaming and performance-oriented PCs, latency values over 70 nanoseconds are considered fairly slow, whereas anything under 60 nanoseconds is typically regarded as more responsive and optimal. Make sure to record these results because you'll need them as a comparison after applying any optimizations or tweaks to your system later on. So why is this step so important? Because memory latency plays a crucial role in performance but is often overlooked. It's the underlying cause of issues like input lag, stuttering during asset streaming, and inconsistent frame pacing. Even a small reduction in RAM latency, say just 10 nanoseconds, can result in thousands of cycles saved per frame, leading to a noticeable improvement in overall system responsiveness. Step two, BIOS tweaks, gear mode, and command rate. Now let's head into the BIOS or UEFI. Restart your PC, spam Dell or F2, and get into BIOS. We'll tune two safe but powerful settings. Gear mode, Intel. On Intel 10th, 11th, and 12th gen and newer, memory can run in gear one, memory controllers synced one-to-one -one with DRAM, or gear two, controller runs at half speed. By default, many systems run Gear 2 for stability, even if your RAM can handle Gear 1. Switch this to Gear 1 if your RAM speed is 3600 MHz or lower. This instantly cuts memory latency by up to 10 NS. Command Rate, CR. Look for a setting called Command Rate or CR. If it's at 2T, change it to 1T. This reduces the number of cycles your RAM waits before executing commands. It's a free latency reduction, and most modern RAM kits handle 1T just fine. Pro tip, if your system becomes unstable after forcing Gear 1 or 1T CR, simply revert the setting. Stability first, but most gaming rigs will run fine. Step 3. BIOS Tweaks TRFC and Secondary Timings Here's where we unlock the big latency drops. Don't worry, this isn't full manual overclocking. Just one setting makes a huge difference, TRFC. 
In BIOS, look for DRAM timings. Expand advanced timings if necessary. Find TRFC, or Row Refresh Cycle Time. This controls how long RAM takes to refresh its cells before serving new data. By default, motherboard auto settings put this way too high for safety. Example, 600 plus cycles. Lower it gradually. Safe starting point? About 350 to 400 for DDR4. For DDR5, about 500 to 600. Save and reboot. Test stability with a few games or AIDA64 stress test. Dropping TRFC can cut memory latency by 10 to 20 nanoseconds instantly, which is massive. And the best part? This doesn't increase clock speeds or voltage, so it's much safer than full RAM overclocking. Other secondary timings you can safely tighten? TFAW set close to 16 to 24. TRRDS slash TRRDL lower values improve responsiveness. Step 4. Windows Registry Tweaks for Memory Management Now that we've addressed the BIOS settings, it's time to focus on Windows itself. The default memory management settings in Windows are far from ideal for reducing RAM latency, and tweaking a few registry entries can make a noticeable difference. Start by pressing Win plus R to open the Run dialog. Then type RegEdit and hit Enter to open the Windows Registry Editor. Proceed with caution here, as changes to the registry can affect system stability if done incorrectly. Once you're in the Registry Editor, navigate to the following path. At this point, you'll want to apply the following tweaks to optimize memory handling. Large System Cache, set to 1. This tweak prioritizes system cache and helps reduce stuttering during things like texture streaming in games or large applications. When Windows gives more priority to the system cache, it can improve performance when dealing with larger datasets or game assets. Disable Paging Executive, set to 1. By default, Windows can page out system code to disk when it's not actively in use. Setting this value to 1 forces Windows to keep important system code in RAM, which cuts down on latency because it doesn't need to fetch code from slower storage when needed. Second level data cache, set to your CPU's L2 cache size in KB. This setting ensures that Windows Memory Scheduler takes your CPU's L2 cache size into account when managing memory. For example, Ryzen 5000 series CPUs have 512 kilobytes of L2 cache per core. For Intel CPUs, this value can vary, so you'll need to search for your specific processor model and input the correct size in kilobytes. Setting this correctly allows Windows to make better decisions about memory usage and cache efficiency. Once you've applied these changes, restart your PC to ensure that the tweaks take effect. These modifications help Windows handle RAM more effectively by minimizing unnecessary paging and enhancing how the system uses memory, ultimately reducing latency and improving overall responsiveness. Step 5. Verify stability and lock-in gains. Now let's make sure everything is stable and measurable. Retest in AIDA64. Run the memory latency benchmark again compare before, after. You should see at least a 5 to 15 nanoseconds improvement. Check latency mod. Run a 5 to 10 minute session while gaming or playing media. Look for reduced ISR or DPC latency related to memory. Stress test with a game. Open something demanding like Apex, Warzone, or Cyberpunk. Pay attention not just to FPS, but to frame time stability smoothness should be way better. Optional, save BIOS profile. If your BIOS allows, save this config as a profile. That way, if you ever reset CMOS, you can restore it instantly. And that's it. You've just taken your RAM from default safe mode to gaming optimized. By tightening gear mode, command rate, and especially TRFC, plus fixing Windows memory management, you've shaved off hidden latency that most gamers don't even know exists. 
This doesn't just boost FPS, it makes every click, every frame, and every micro movement feel snappier. If this helped you, hit like, drop a comment with your latency results before after, and subscribe for more deep dive optimizations like this. Stay smooth, and I'll catch you in the next one.